So if I had to have any one of these lights, the light I would choose is What's up guys, it's your boy Eugene, and today we're gonna to be talking about mono lights. More specifically, two of the more popular 400 watt mono lights you can use for your photography needs. On my left, we have the Orlit Rovelite RT400. And on my right, we have the Flashpoint Explore 400 Pro. These two mono lights are very, very similar in what they have to offer. And I'm not gonna show you any picture examples or anything because 400 watts is 400 watts. Depending on what modifier you use, it's gonna depend on what spread you're going to get. And there's a thousand videos about that already. So we're just gonna dive and do kind of an overview on the specs, why you may want one over the other. I will show you some recycle time examples, but that's about it. Here's a warning because we're about to dive into some deep nerdy specs right now. If you want to skip to the timestamp right about here, you can get to my verdict, if you will. So let's get to it. The output on both of these lights is 400 watts. So both lights are going to be equal as far as the amount of light that they can output. The compatibility, the Orlet's gonna be compatible with Nikon, Canon, Fuji, and Sony, whereas the Flashpoint is going to be compatible with Canon, Nikon, Fuji, Sony, Panasonic, and Olympus. So definitely advantage for the Flashpoint when it comes to compatibility with your camera system. Next up, we have mount. The Orlet takes a Bowen mounts natively. As you can see here, has the reflector already sitting there, and you can just take it on out. Bowen's mount, right there. The flash point is a little different. Not really a native Bowen's mount here. It's its own proprietary, I'm actually not too sure what mount this is, I'm just going to be honest. But you do get an adapter in the box to be able to mount all of your Bowen's modifiers. The cool thing about the flash point is you do have the ability to add other adapters to it. So not only can you adapt Bowen's mount modifiers, but you can add pro photo stuff, brawn color things, and they're gonna be adding much more uh, adapters to that. So I find the flexibility with the flash point to be much, much better um, when it comes to that. So next we're gonna talk about recycle time. The recycle time on the Orlet is gonna be 0.05 seconds to 1.6 seconds at full power. Whereas the recycle time on the flash point is gonna be 0.01 seconds to just about one second on a recycle time. So as you can see, we are at full power now. Let's see how long it takes for it to recycle. So we're at full power right now, so let's fire them off. The flash point's just slightly faster. Next we're gonna talk about is flash duration. So the flash duration on the Orlet is gonna be 1 800th of a second, all the way up to 1 19,000th of a second in its freeze mode. So the flash duration on the flash point, no pun intended, is going to be 1 240th of a second all the way up to 1 12,820th of a second. Here's what I think a little iffy. So the flash duration on the Orlet is measured in T5 times, and the flash duration on the flash point is measured in T1 times. So if you're looking for a light to freeze action with minimal motion blur, I would go for the flash point, but if that's not an issue for you at all, I would stick with the Orlet. Now, both of these lights offer a modeling lamp, which is really, really good to have, especially when you're in a not adequately lit situation. So 15 watts on the Orlet, 30 watts on the flash point. I would say advantage flash point, just for having a little bit more output on their LED. Next, we're gonna talk about the battery capacity. So you're getting a massive 4,400 milliamp hour battery with the Orlet, and that's good for 400 flashes. 
Whereas on the flash point, you're getting a 2600 milliamp hour battery, which is good for 390 flashes. So obviously the advantage is gonna be with the Orlet because you're gonna be getting more flashes out of that battery, but that's at a cost. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So now let's talk about radio frequencies and what these two lights are compatible with. So the Orlet is not only gonna just be compatible with the, the Orlet RT system, but it's also compatible with the Canon RT system and the Mars T RT system, which is the Jinbei version of that. So you do have a lot of flexibility with this, especially if you're a native Canon shooter, you can use one remote to control all of your lights, which is really cool. The Flashpoint, on the other hand, it's compatible with the Flashpoint R2 system, as well as the Godox X system. So not as many systems is compatible with, although it is compatible with more cameras. I would say the advantage is here is having more frequencies that it can work with as far as radio communication. It really honestly should be a tie, but I'm gonna give the advantage to the Orlet today. Next, let's talk about weight. So remember I was talking to you about the 4,400 milliamp hour battery. It's a bigger battery. It's heavier than the 26 milliamp hour battery. That said, this comes in at a five pounds, whereas this comes in at 4.6 pounds. You may look at me and say 0.4 pounds isn't much. Well, if you have that on a, on a boom pole with a modifier, it's going to get heavy. So I feel like with this one, you're not gonna run the risk of it tipping over at least as frequently, and you don't want that to happen anyway, so. Next, let's talk about size. So the dimensions of the Orlet, I'm gonna just put on the screen here. And the dimension of the flash point, I'm gonna put on the screen here. I like smaller mono lights, so advantage, flash point. Now let's talk about price. The Flashpoint is coming in at $649.99 on Adorama's website. Depending if it's on sale or not, it may be lower, depending on when you watch this video. But the Orlet at Adorama right now is showing up as $349 on sale. But original price could go back up to $499, but still, that's about a $150 difference that you're seeing between these flashes. So, advantage, or let for price. Now let's talk about some of the extra features you get with these lights. So with the Orlet, the reflector itself has a magnetic ring, magnetic, magnetic ring around the reflector so you can attach filters magnetically, which is pretty cool. It comes with these little gels and things you can put on there and it's pretty cool how it works. They just attach like that and then you have a gel light. In addition to the reflectors, you're also having the ability to have smartphone compatibility. So not only can you connect the app to it, but you can change your flash power on the go, even if you don't have your remote or command or even camera on you, which is really good. I can see this being really, really helpful if you're out there shooting weddings or, or events, indoor events, where you have multiple lights set up everywhere. So good job, Orlet. So the flash point, you have this thing called stable color mode, which will keep the light temperature stable for when you're taking photos. So if you are one of those photographers who is out there and likes to keep their colors consistent all the way through, you will have much better luck with the flash point. Um, another thing that I touched on previously was the ability to adapt other brand modifiers to it. So not only can you get Bowen stuff, but you can add Profoto, brawn color just by adding a simple adapter to the light so if you already have other modifiers or you already bought into other systems then you don't have to worry about having modifiers that aren't going to work with your light one thing i will touch on that i didn't touch on with the orlet here the fact that the explorers ecosystem or the godox ecosystem is much bigger than the orlet with the 400 Pro, they also have the 600 Pro, the 600, they have the 8200s that a lot of people love because they're small and compact, but you have all these lights and flashes that you can have add and work seamlessly together on the same frequency. On this one, you have the 400, you have the 600, you have the 601, the 610, not as many smaller flashes, which is kind of been my thing, especially when I'm traveling around. I see this ecosystem as being way more beneficial for what I need. 
so the verdict. Both of these lights are extremely, extremely great. I mean, you're getting 400 watt light here at around $400, $500, depending on when you're looking at this video. And you're getting a very, really, really color accurate light here with a great ecosystem, a short flash duration, just around the $600 price point here. My verdict is if I had to have any one of these lights, the light I would choose is the flash point. Reason being, it's smaller, more compact. It's easier to travel with for me, especially when I'm when I'm booming uh, for for portraits, overhead portraits, or whatever. It's color accurate. The short flash duration will help me when I'm doing you know crazy shoots where I need to freeze like water droplets or whatever the hell. I'm really gonna enjoy the ecosystem. Now I've shot with both. I'm recently getting rid of my 400 here just because I wasn't able to find those compact flashes within that ecosystem that would work with what I would want them to work with. That doesn't make this a bad light because for $350 or whatever sale you're able to get this at, definitely, definitely worth it because it's a, it's a good light. I actually got this on Black Friday, so I paid $299 for this light. And for $299, that's a steal. Um, so always look for sales on this because this is a great value. But if you had the extra money, I would go with this one. With that said, what do you guys think? I'm going to put links to both of these lights in the description down below. So you can obviously purchase or make whatever decision you want to when it comes to these. My name is Malcolm Eugene and well, it's a wrap.